Dissolve the yeast with your hand in the warm water. It's lovely. Don't do this if you're asleep, because it makes you wee yourself. Certain pizza styles have some clear and defined guidelines as to what we should and shouldn't do. For example, Detroit pizza, we should try and use a traditional blue steel Detroit pan with the slanted edges and top it with brick cheese. Neapolitan pizza, we can only use four things in our dough. We can't add oil, we can't add sugar. These things give us kind of a framework to work within when making those sorts of pizza. With New York pizza, no such rules exist and it is very subjective. In this video, we're gonna try and show you our version of a New York style pizza cooked in rock box. So let's get started. So what exactly are we looking for from our subjective New York slice? Well, we want it to be brown all the way around the outside, and we want it to be crisp, and we want the crust to kind of crack and bend but never break. These things are normally served by the slice, people eat them out on the streets, you can't have toppings falling off, and you need to be able to fold it without bread going everywhere and going all over your nice clothes when you're out on the streets of New York doing cool stuff. We're gonna start with our water, 665 mil. There is a belief that the water in New York makes New York pizza taste the way it does. Now, we don't quite have the budget here, so we're using English tap water heated to about 30 degrees, and we're gonna to add to that one gram of fresh yeast. So once the yeast is kind of semi-dissolved, pop the bowl onto a mixer with a dough hook attachment. New York pizza quite often uses a blend of flours rather than just double O. And with our recipe, we're gonna use three different flours to give us a perfect New York pizza, in my opinion. Okay, don't at me. So our strong bread flour is gonna give us a really nice kind of elasticity to the dough that you don't get with double O flours or wholemeal flours. 625 grams, and we're just gonna start adding that to the mixer. We're now gonna add 325 grams of double O flour. So this is Molina della Giovanna, but you could use Caputo or any kind of double O flour. Don't feel tied to a certain brand, just play about with it. The final flour we're adding to our dough is 100 grams of wholemeal flour. The wholemeal flour is gonna give us a couple of things. It's gonna aid our color, so we get a really nice kind of brown, deep brown tan, and it's also gonna give us a really big depth of flavor because it's gonna give that almost kind of bready feel to the crust. And when we've got kind of nearly all the flour in, we can add our salt. So we've got 28 grams of fine sea salt here, or kosher salt, whatever you want to use. So once all the flours and the salt is in, we can just give it a little scrape down the side with our trusty dough scraper. And we can go up a speed now. So we're going to go up to the second speed on the mixer. So after around about three or four minutes, that dough would have come together nicely. It shouldn't be too tacky to touch. And we can now add 25 grams of olive oil. Once our oil has gone into there, we're going to leave that dough to rest for 10 minutes before just bringing it together with one final mix. Normally we'd cut here, but we thought we'd just let you wait with us. Okay, 10 minutes is up. So this is rested for 10 minutes, just gives our gluten a chance to relax. Gluten is like a muscle, so you know if you exercise, you kind of exercise, exercise, rest, 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 exercise, exercise. That's how you build the muscle. The same with gluten. So we're now just going to bring this together for another two minutes or so, just to really incorporate that oil and make sure we've got a nice, smooth, shiny dough. You can kind of go straight in on second speed now, just for a couple of minutes. Transfer this to our bench now, and we're just going to bring it together into a ball. So just kind of working on the surface, not trying to knead it or anything at this point, just shaping it together. He's smooth, he's shiny, he's not tacky at all. We're now ready to leave this to bench rest for one hour before boiling it. So our dough has been bench resting for one hour. I hope you've utilised that hour to do something fun. You can see it's just kind of, he's got a bit larger, a bit flatter. We've got a few bubbles forming over here. We're just going to oil our workbench, okay? It's nice and evenly spread. You don't need to do this on a metal surface or, you know, you can do it on any surface. Wooden surface is fine, marble, granite, the floor. So we're going to separate our dough into 240 gram pieces. And then we're just going to pick him up and put him the other way down on the oil. So get the dough ball in front of you, so your oiled side is now still face down on the bench, and just shape it, shape it into a dough ball by pulling it over your fingers. You're then going to use the side of your hands just to pull it together and just give them a little roll in the oil again, and you'll be left with something that should look a bit shiny and a bit like that. At the bottom, we just want to squeeze him shut, almost like a dumpling, dim sum dumpling, we're just kind of squeezing him together. If he's not sealed at the bottom, 
what we're going to find is we'll get little air pockets, and that's when we get thin bits, thin bits of dough. So New York pizzas are traditionally very large, normally about 18 inches. That's why you buy the New York slice. You buy them by the slice. This comes from apparently a pizzeria where the workers would come in and they'd want a bit of pizza. And the chef would then be like, how much money have you got? I'll cut you a size depending on how much money you've got. So we're doing these smaller pizzas, smaller dough balls that fit into Rockbox so we can have a whole New York pizza each. That way you get more crust, you see. And this dough is so tasty, you're going to want a lot of crust. Crust is a must. Our dough balls are portioned, ready to go. We're going to cover them with cling film or a damp towel and leave them in the fridge for between 18 and 24 hours, at which point we can turn them into wonderful New York pizzas. Our dough balls have been in the fridge for 24 hours and now they've come out and sat at room temperature for about an hour and a half, two hours. This just allows the gluten to relax and will make it much easier to open into a pizza. With toppings, New York pizza doesn't have the strict rules that Neapolitan does. So with a tomato sauce, you can kind of do whatever you want. A lot of places will do a cooked down tomato sauce so it's a bit richer. Some places will add basil to it, oregano to it, chili flakes. We've been researching this recipe for a few months now, trying to get it to where we want it to be. And we found that a Neapolitan style sauce is probably the best way to go in Rockbox. So this is simply San Marzano tomatoes, a little salt and a little hand blend. That's all we've got in there. We don't want to use Fiorda Latte like we would for a Neapolitan pizza, it's just a bit too wet. So what we've got here is a low moisture mozzarella and we've grated half and we've sliced the other half. Certain pizzerias in New York will use what's known as the East Coast 50-50 blend, which is 50% whole milk mozzarella and 50% semi-skimmed mozzarella. That's why you see that kind of change in color, the kind of different yellows and whites that you see across them. By using a low moisture mozzarella, grating half and ripping over half, as that mixes with the tomato sauce during the longer cook time, we'll still see those lovely kind of different shades of white and yellow all across the pizza. For me, the most traditional New York pizza appearance-wise is probably pepperoni. In America, they have a thing called cupping roni, and it's a pepperoni that naturally is, is designed to cup up and give you those little pools of fat in the middle that you just want to swim in and bathe in and maybe even live in. It's quite a hard thing to find in the UK. We found that a really good quality chorizo, Iberico chorizo, when sliced, that will give you a similar kind of curl up and pool of oil as all the fat comes out of that. So you're not actually eating pepperoni, you're eating chorizo, but it's gonna taste and look great. As with opening any pizza, Neapolitan pizza, and working with dough in general, you want a nice, clean work surface to open your pizza on. Our dough ball has been tossed in a mix of double O flour and semolina. The semolina flour is gonna help aid our crispiness of our crust. Remember, we want that crispy crust that doesn't quite break. The semolina will give us tiny, tiny little spots of it that will just make it super, super crispy on the outside. We're not looking for this big puffy crust. We want a much smaller crust. Leave probably about half of what you would for a Neapolitan pizza in terms of the crust that you're leaving at the side. So you don't need to be too shy with the flour. So once you've got your shape, your basic pizza shape, you can then pull it onto your knuckles and just kind of let it fall. And this dough, because of the inclusion of oil and the blend of flours we've got in there, we'll find that it's much easier to handle. It's not quite as delicate as a Neapolitan dough or an unenriched dough. You give yourself another little dusting underneath to aid that crispiness and just get your final shape. Cool, so now we just want to pop out any air bubbles that are kind of in the base. So just give it a little slap and a quick lift, check he's not sticking. We're going to start with the tomato sauce. This is a one ounce ladle we've got here. So for this size of pizza, I tend to go for one full ladle and about a half. Into the center of the pizza, then use the bottom of the ladle. What we want to make sure we do here is get all the way to the edge, leaving just that kind of one finger width crust all the way around the outside. So once we're happy with our tomato sauce distribution, we're going to go in with a small amount of our grated low moisture mozzarella. A few spots of the sliced mozzarella. So this is the same cheese, but because one is grated and one is sliced, it's going to melt and cook slightly differently. Now before distributing the pepperoni or whatever topping you're going to kind of put on at this stage, it's a good idea to get it onto the peel with New York pizza. Then we can lay over our pepperoni. I know it's chorizo, I know. I'm going to keep calling it pepperoni. We're going to head over to the oven. So Rockbox is on its lowest possible flame and running around about 350. And we're looking for a deck temperature of about 420. Okay, and we're going to go straight into the oven. So in between bakes, if you're making a few of these New York style pizzas, you'll find that you're going to want to crank the heat up a little bit just to get a bit more heat into the stone and turn it back down just before your pizza goes in. 
Our complete cook time for these guys is going to be about 4 minutes 20 seconds. So after about 30, 40 seconds, we can get our first turn in nice and gently and give it a full 180 degree turn. So our New York style pizza is going to get a few spots, a few blisters, a few charred areas around the crust, similar to its Neapolitan cousin. Uh, this is a natural consequence of kind of the fermentation time and the temperature of the oven that we're cooking it. I'm using the turning pill, the one-handed turning pill. This is going to allow me to keep the pizza in the oven and give me a more even bake. If you've only got the landing pill, that's fine. You can still make this recipe. But if you have got the turning pill, this is a good opportunity to use it. Pizza, pizza, pizza. So we can see that the chorizo that we sliced ourselves has cut up really similar to kind of the American cupping roni that you'll find. And it's nice and crispy. As the cheese and the tomato has melded together, the mix of the grated and the kind of ripped mozzarella has given us all these different types of yellows all around the outside. So let's slice it up. We don't mind a little bit of a droop on the end. We don't mind some spotting, those kind of things that would associate with Neapolitan. But what we don't want is toppings and cheese falling off all over the place. So let's see how we got on. I could sit a newborn baby under this, knowing full well that no cheese or fat is gonna fall on his head. So this is our version of a New York slice made in rock box. When you eat it, you wanna bend the crust, you'll feel it bend, you'll feel it crunch, but it won't break, it won't crack, it's just perfect. It's great. I instantly feel like I'm from New York. That's how I feel now. I'm gonna go start a rap group. You, you, watching YouTube alone in your room. Like, subscribe, and then go and get some friends, make a New York pizza, hashtag Gosney Kitchen, let us see it. So what exactly are we all nervous, Andy? <laughs> it's not my voice.